Alright fellas, I got another restoration update video to tackle here and I'm going to start this one with new carpet. So this isn't going to be one of my typical videos, more or less uh, typical how-to videos. This is pretty self-explanatory. There's really not much of a trick to putting carpet in. Uh, so I'm going to gloss over that real quick and then we'll go over all the stuff that we've done to the truck uh, over the past really couple years. So. Uh, as you see there, I do have the new carpet. That was an eBay purchase. And then for the inside, I have the bright work. These door sill plates, I have both driver and passenger side. These were, um, purchased these from LMC Truck. And these just go right down in this area. Similar to that. This one goes roughly like that. They're not in their final position, but I got one hand free and one hand holding the camera, so. That's where those go. As you can see, I've got a little bit of a head start. I have the driver's side seat out of the truck. Now I just need to pull the center console and the passenger side seat. If you want to see uh, how I got these uh, suburban bucket seats installed, I do have, I believe it's an eight or nine part series. I'll annotate a link to those videos if you want to see how that was done. So, uh, but like I said, this is, I'm really just gonna gloss over this work. And I've got the carpet set out here in the sun, hoping it will uh, loosen up a little bit, get some of the wrinkles out, make it a little easier and nicer uh, when it gets installed. So, so yeah, I'll just set the camera up on the tripod. Probably put a lot of this in fast motion because it's just nuts and bolts, taking nuts and bolts out. We'll vacuum out the inside, probably get a bucket of soapy water and a sponge and wipe everything down real good and then we'll start throwing the carpet in there. So real quick, a couple things I'd like to mention. I got the seats out and the console. What I've done is I've left the mounting bolts in place for the seats, things like the seat belt, these studs for the center console, and it's the same over there on the driver's side. Now this little tab right here, that's also for the seat, but I'll be able to feel uh, this little bung here that's welded uh, to the floor through the carpet. Basically what I'm doing, I'll, like I said, I'll be able to feel these bolts through the carpet because the, the carpet is molded to fit however it's not doesn't have any pre-cut holes or anything like that for mounting your seat your bench seat or if you put uh, bucket seats a custom job like I have it certainly wouldn't have holes for that when I put the carpet over this I'll be able to feel it and I'll take a box cutter knife and just cut a small slit straight through the carpet and then take the bolts out when I put the carpet in I put the seats back on I'll be able to push that bolt uh, through the carpet, through the hole in the carpet, the slit in the carpet, into the captured nut that's welded to uh, the bottom of the cab.
guys. Well, we got the carpet all fully installed, and this squirrel better run. Okay, he made it. So, like I said, we got the carpet fully installed. I thought I'd do the rest of the update video driving the truck. Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever done one uh, in that manner. And uh, it's getting warm out, so I got the window open, and I hope that's not uh, screwing up the audio too much. Uh, but let's just go over a few things. So, uh, since the last update video, uh, the uh, biggest and most obvious thing was the Fotina paint job. Now, it's been almost a year since that was done, and it's holding up really well, at least um, the uh, clear coat that I had sprayed on by a local body shop. Um, I think I paid, if I remember right, four to $500, which is not a lot for uh, a clear coat paint job. And uh, it's, it, it's, it's holding up real well. It's only been a year, so time will tell, uh, but that's, you know, fairly inexpensive for a paint job. Uh, so, uh, what else we got? We got uh, four new tires. I think in the last video, I only had one, maybe two, new tires and so I've gone ahead and I've painted the other uh, three wheels with just uh, rust-oleum it was uh, it's a gray color I can't remember the exact name of the color um, but I've finished painting those I've got four new tires on here they're nothing fancy they're uh, kind of cheapo tires uh, the size is 235 75 R15 and let's see what else uh, the door panels not sure if, you, if that's showing up in the video but we've got brand new door panels on here and they were a little bit I've got a video of that and I'll uh, annotate a link uh, uh, to direct you to those videos they were kind of a pain in the butt they're Chinese off-brand it was an eBay purchase and they didn't fit that well they, they weren't that bad and for the price I paid they really fit okay uh, but I did have to tweak them a little bit and, and do some massaging of the plastic to get everything to sit flush with the uh, the door panels with the doors themselves I should say and so that all went pretty well and everything's kind of still holding up pretty good uh, as far as that is concerned now uh, let's see we did the vent panels we got both uh, driver and passenger side of my truck is the non-AC cab, so I do have a, uh, a vent on a, a manual vent on both sides of the truck. Uh, that again was an eBay purchase. I was uh, not able to find uh, one side. I think it was the driver's side. Uh, I looked through all my vendors uh, that I've used before, LMC Truck, Classic Industries, uh, Brothers Truck Parts, and nobody seemed to sell the driver's side uh, vent panel. So I got on eBay, I found some good original ones. They were not new old stock, they were used, and they were red. And my interior is red and black, but I wanted those to be black. So I painted those black, and those the paint's been holding up well. That was my biggest concern, was the paint gonna stick real well? I bought a, a special, I believe it was a Krylon paint for plastic. And that's holding up really, really well. So uh, I'm real, real happy with that. Now, let's see. Upcoming modifications. Well, I'm th the summer's coming up. Like I said, it's getting warm outside right now. Summer's just about here. And I think I need to upgrade my cooling system. Now, when I got this truck, let's see, was it 2010, 2011, or something like that? The, uh, the radiator had a leak in it. So I replaced the radiator. It was just a part store uh, radiator, uh, two row radiator, aluminum core with plastic tanks. And so it's, it, it, it works fine. I don't have a fan shroud on there. I'm running a 14 inch electric fan. And when it gets warm outside, when it's above, let's say, 80, 80 degrees outside, which is not all that warm. Uh, rolling like I am, I, I don't, I don't have any, I don't have any cooling problems. But when I'm stuck at a red light, or I'm stuck in traffic, or even at a drive-through, and it's just idling, 
uh, the temperature will climb up and it has gone above 210 pushing 215 and 220 we got a fire truck up ahead pulling out um, at that point I will turn on uh, the heater let me let this uh, fire truck pass All right, so I guess you guys can probably hear me again. So I turn on the heater to vent some of that heat from the engine, and it seems to work. But nonetheless, I'm still kind of having a uh, cooling problem. So uh, I'm likely going to upgrade to a full aluminum radiator, uh, probably three-row aluminum radiator, just something that's got a little more capacity, and a fan shroud. Fan shroud is going to be the biggest difference. I may not even... Uh, I take that back. I may not get a new radiator, but I'm certainly going to get a fan shroud. I'm still debating whether I want to go with a mechanical fan or an electric fan. Keep the electric fan I've got and just put a shroud on there. That should help out significantly. Um, we just have to test it out. But I'm kind of move. I'm kind of leaning more towards the buying a whole new radiator just to have that kind of peace of mind that. Uh, I'm not going to have any overheating issues. And, uh, I'm, and like I said, I may go with a mechanical fan. I've just got the straight, uh, the inline six in this truck. Certainly not a hot rod engine by any means. And yes, you do lose uh, some horsepower. It's called parasitic loss uh, by having a lot of accessories on the engine. And a, and a mechanical fan is one of the biggest draws uh, to parasitic loss. But it ain't a big horsepower motor. I'm not going for not trying to drag race so if I lose five or ten horsepower I'm probably not even gonna notice it so uh, I'm, I am leaning more towards the mechanical fan and, uh, what I'm leading up to with the cooling system issues and as a bumpy road is I'm going to install air conditioning uh, I've got my eye on the uh, on a sure fit system from vintage air and this truck, when I bought it, somebody had put aftermarket air conditioning in it. And I believe it was R12. It was a very funky system that I've never really seen before. In that, uh, and maybe it was just poorly installed, but somebody actually used band clamps on the fittings. So the high pressure side and the low pressure side coming out of the compressor and then going into the uh, evaporator for and up to the condenser and all that they, it was it was barbed fittings and uh, uh, band clamps hose clamps so but it did come that system and I still have it I well I still have small components of it uh, a sand in 508 AC compressor which I believe is the same one that vintage air is using it came with that and a bracket for the inline six. So that kind of rocks. Uh, I'm going to have to adjust the bracket a little bit because the, it uses a V-belt and it wasn't lining up very well with my uh, crank pulley and water pump pulley. So I'm going to have to tweak with that a little bit, but that's not a big deal. I've got the bracket. That's kind of the important thing. So I'm going to address the cooling issue so that I can run air conditioning. You know, I live in Dallas, Texas. It gets real hot in the summer. 104, 105 degrees is not uncommon. And that's with 50%, 60%, 70% humidity, just depending on the day. Uh, so it can get pretty uncomfortable. And I would like to drive this truck uh, as a year round. It's just a toy. It's just a project. It's not my daily driver. Um, but I would like to be able to drive it uh, whenever I want. And that includes in the middle of August if I want to. So I'm going to do that. Uh, we're going to put some AC in this thing. Let's see, lastly, uh, I'm going to need a radio. And I'm probably going to do that last because it's not that important to me. Getting the air conditioning installed is far more important to me uh, than having music in here because I can. Honestly, I can just use my phone. It plays out of the speaker on the bottom. It's not perfect, but it works. And, you know, I, the head unit that I would get is one of those retro looking ones. One of the things I'm really, that really got me excited about this truck uh, when I was shopping was that this truck 
the radio outlet uh, or the space for the radio went all through the 1990s without getting chopped up and molested and opened up wide, uh, wider for somebody to put a CD player in there. It's still original. So I'm going to go with one of those retro style uh, receivers that, you know, it's a digital interface and it has a USB port on the back because all my music, I don't have CDs anymore. I, I All my music is digital. It's on my phone. And I went digital probably back in 2006 or 2007, something like that. I haven't used CDs at all since then. So I don't need a CD player. So having a USB port or a three and a half millimeter jack just to plug my phone in and listen to music there will be fine. I'm going to do that. I'll get a radio similar to that. I don't have one necessarily picked out a, a specific model. There's several to choose from. I'll get that and I'm going to get the kick panel speakers as well. And uh, haven't decided. I have some kind of Jeez, uh, I don't even remember, but I bought the speakers in my dash from Crutchfield. And I don't remember the manufacturer. They were fairly inexpensive, but they had a lot of really good reviews. And a lot of people said, well, they're for the price you pay, they're really pretty good. So I made, I have seen on eBay some vendors selling the kick panels without speakers installed. And I think they take less uh, five and a quarter, a six and a half inch speaker. So I may go that route and buy the ones without speakers and then match. Uh, so I'll have to go back to my uh, dash install video and I'll annotate a link to that if you want to watch that. That's where I installed the speakers at the same time I was installing the dash. So uh, that'll remind me which speakers that I bought and I can buy another pair, have a matching set and hopefully have some decent sound quality out of them. So that's about it. Uh, you know, like I said, we, we've got some videos coming up for uh, the cool the radiator. I'm almost certainly going to go with a new radiator, and then we've got to install some air conditioning. So, uh, and then a radio. Uh, radio may not happen until this winter, this later this fall or this winter, because. A uh, new radiator, you know, a uh, decent one's probably going to cost me at least $300. And then the AC kit from Vintage Air, I've seen it, it runs about, for the full complete kit, compressor, evaporator core, all the lines, everything included, runs about $1,300. So, you know, $300 for the radiator, $1,300 for the AC, that's $1,600. And so that's probably going to drain my funds pretty well. So it may not be until late this fall or this winter before I get a radio installed in here. So, uh, but keep a lookout for those videos. Um, they'll be coming out. So uh, I appreciate y'all watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe.